Hello, Aceal here. In this video, we're going to talk a bit about floats and doubles, as well as some useful scanning methods to make our lives a little easier. Uh, first thing we're going to kind of talk about is the interpretation of bytes. Um, so far, what we've been doing is we've been looking at bytes, and we've been we've been kind of treating them as whatever number that they are. So we're just raw conversion from hex to decimal. However, we're not pigeonholed by this necessarily. There are other options that we have. Uh, we could interpret these bytes in many, many ways. In fact, we've uh, dealt with several so far where we we can consider this number as a 4-byte integer. We can consider it as 4 1-byte integers, or 2 shorts, 2 2-byte two integers. So we can consider it as the entire string a a a b b c c d d and convert this into a into a decimal value we can consider it as a a b b that's one value and then another value c c d d and so on but we could also interpret these bytes in a completely different manner and this image here kind of kind of demonstrates that so what we can do is instead of just converting these these bits into a a value directly we can read them in such a way as to get a decimal number and we do this by saying the first bit in a 32 bit value so here in windows calculator we have 0 to 30 31 bits 32 total and the first one we could say let's let's consider that the sign bit so 0 is positive, 1 is negative. In the next 8, we consider the exponent portion of the decimal number, and the remaining 23 bits we consider as the fraction or mantissa portion of the of the number. And this is how a single is stored. There's actually a lot of complex math that goes on behind it. You actually, in your computer, you have an entire FPU dedicated to dealing with floats and floating point operations. Uh, so we don't need to get into the the details of how this is done. Just know that you can interpret the bits in a different way to get a different number, and that's just, that's why a floating point value takes four bytes of data, but a four byte integer also takes four bytes of data, and they can yield incredibly different results. In fact, this number here, if we were to take these these bits and put them into the calculator here and see what number we get, it would be incredibly different. And a double is actually the same concept, except we have a lot more space to work with because we have eight bytes of space. It is double the length of a single. And they they have the sign bit, the exponent bit, and a larger fraction bit. Doubles do not come up as much as floats in terms of uh, games because floats are generally adequate. We You generally don't need that much precision to store a lot of the stuff that takes a decimal value, such as position or time. There's generally no need to be that accurate in terms of time. In fact, the hardware generally isn't capable of being that accurate in terms of time, so there's no reason to use a double in those cases. But for some things, like maybe they're storing the value of pi, and they really want a lot of the digits in there, so they want to be really accurate, you might use a double for something like that. Uh, otherwise, a single is generally used, so most of the time we're just going to be searching for floats. In, this, in the example that I have set up for you today, um, the example is only going to deal with floats, but just remember there's a lot of ways to interpret bytes. We're not limited to just a number. In fact, we'll learn later how assembly language works, how zeros and ones become bytes, which become code, and that'll probably fry your brains a little bit. But that's a long ways off. First, let's hop into Secret Mario Chronicles. We're going to be looking for our position, a very standard thing to look for. A few things to learn along the way, so let's attach attach Cheat Engine. And what we're going to do is we're going to do an unknown initial value scan on our position. We're going to want to switch to a float. We're not going to want to search... Oh, they reset this box over here, so unknown initial value, float. And we're going to walk forward a little bit into an increased value. When we first made the list, we were somewhere in the other bush over here. And now we walked over here, so the value is increased. And now we're going to walk forward a bit. 
we were in this bush over here, we walked forward, so now the value's increased. And so on. Walk over here, out of the bush, increased, and then we can walk backwards. We can walk all the way back over here. We've decreased since the last skin. And we've walk over here, and we've decreased since the last scan. Now we're going to stand in place for a bit, do some unchanged values. This le this weeds out some of the uh, values that are constantly changing for no reason. And we can just do a few unknown, or sorry, unchanged scans, and just keep walking around some more. Walk forward. This game really doesn't like it when you tab out. It kind of gets choppy on you. Increase. So I've got it down to 35. I think. I can actually narrow it down a lot more. So I'm going to add all of these to this list, and we're going to show some methods to narrow this down a different way than scanning, because sometimes you can't narrow it down just by scanning. So what you do is you add everything you want to narrow down to your list, and you freeze half of the list. This is the half culling method. Freeze half, and try to walk around. You notice that I'm kind of glitching out, but my position is staying more or less the same. Cheat Engine keeps trying to put it back to where it was. So that means that we somewhere in this half we froze it. Uh, which means that one of these addresses is the location of our position. So we can unfreeze this half and actually go to the other half and we know it's not this half so we can just delete it. Because it was... because when we froze this half our position was locked it must be in this half. It's pretty straightforward and we can repeat that a few times freeze maybe this half that was kind of a bad split but it's no big deal and my position is frozen thus it must be in this half so we can go ahead and unfreeze those and delete these it is possible to crash your game using this method um, not all the time though and it sometimes it's the best option you have so you just kinda of have to pray to the computer gods so okay Let's try it with this second half now. We're going to freeze the second half, walk around, and you notice we're not being vacuumed back to that spot every time, which means we froze this half and nothing happened, thus this half is completely useless to us, so we can delete it, which leaves five results. Once you get down pretty small, you can just kind of manually try a few here and there. It must be in this half. Let's... Nope unfreeze a few so when I unfroze this one here I was able to move freely so it must be this one we can test it out right now yep so this is position X and a few things to note here a few complications one this is not a static address if I restart this game this will not work anymore the position X address that we found will no longer point to the position thus we need to do a pointer scan and find a pointer uh, that we can reuse and that way we can change our X position every time we reopen the game I'm actually not going to touch on that right now that'll be an intermediate subject that we get into later and the second thing to note is that in computer land X is negative to the left and positive to the right, but Y is not like you've learned in math class. You've learned that when you draw the axes, up is positive and down is negative, but in computers, if you notice, the origin is at the top left of the screen, so if we go, if we go down, that would mean everything on our screen is in a negative position and that would be a stupid way to do things so they have the origin here and what they've done is they flipped the vertical axes so going down is actually positive so if we jump in the game we are going towards the negative this is a decreasing value for jumping upwards so here I'm at some value and now I'm at a decreased value and if I were to hop down from here now my position has increased that's just generally how it works in in games and everything on a computer uh, the progr programmer can actually store the position using normal conventions but they have to jump through some extra hoops in order to negate everything when they actually go to do some calc drawing calculations and things like that for the most part you pretty much can just assume that negative is up and positive is down as for the x direction that's exactly the same so we don't need to worry about that um, 
One last note before we're done here is that you need to get really good at scanning in order to progress into far into the intermediate and advanced sections. You can get pretty far into the intermediate, but once you start hitting advanced stuff, it'll be impossible for you to really go on without being really good at scanning, so I would do that. I would get good at finding values. You might want to try and learn pointers first, that way you can reuse stuff once you find it. Try learning pointers and get getting really good at scanning for things. Uh, you'll find that there's some useful tricks you pick up along the way. Like, let's say we're looking for a 4 byte health. Let's say we're looking for health. Um, let's say it's a health bar, so we don't know what it is. Instead of doing an unknown initial value, you can do a bigger than the zero scan. Because health is never going to be negative if you're just standing around town or something. So there's tricks like this to help us so your initial list is a lot less than it should be. Uh, things like that. You really just pick those up through experience. And it's vital to learn these things in order to progress. So I guess that's pretty much it for this video. Get good at scanning. And hopefully you've learned a bit about floats. Alright, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Farewell.